Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to the latest instalment of Tom Dane's Indie Read Along. So today I have three poetry books to review for you. These are all published by Fly on the Wall Press. They're part of their chat book series and they follow on from a previous review I did as well. So we'll start with Bad Mommy Stay Mommy by Elizabeth Horan. So this is basically poetry that's about um, postpartum depression. And what I'm going to do with each of these books, there are certain poems that I flagged out and I'm going to read them to you. So here we'll go with A Son Is Born, the second. My son cannot remember the day he came to lose his mother. My son only knows I was sad before and that now I'm feeling better. I alone know the secret, the date of the day he lost me, and I'll tell you since I trust you. It was the day my second was born, came out shrieking, ghouls after me, the sinner, a lion roaring in the night, a mauled honey badger. Ah yes, he was lifted right out of the smiling incision and laid skin to skin on my breast. And I remember thinking he looked odd, like a football player helmeted with hair, laying on the nurse's table, red and writhing, a salamander underfoot. And then I remember my firstborn pointed at him and said, out. Okay, so here we have keeping tabs. Here I go again down the goddamn rabbit hole, chasing the oily smell of my past as only I can do. It's so dirty, it's such a waste of time, this hating myself. But I go back anyway, I can't stay away, like a lover who promised me forever. Here I go again, berating my brain, when I mess up, instead of making amends, I go deep, I go dark. I use the pain of what I've done, to burn the eyes of those peering into the destruction zone I had cordoned off. My children have learned not to listen when I yell, when I say, forgive me babies, mommy didn't mean it. They look at me with a hint of pity, which belies their youthful ages, that seem to say, we know she's nuts, let's move on and play quietly over here, as to not disturb the dragon again. They think of me like a feral cat that can't be trusted, too unpredictable with her claws, like a mutt who eats the garbage again and again, despite the punishments, despite the slap to her head, which reverberates across her guilty tongue. Here I go again, such a pussy, hiding in this isolation, which so adroitly keeps tabs on my chance of being a good person. This one's quite a long one here, but this is possibly my favourite one. It's more prose poetry, I guess. Um, so it's called I Hate Elizabeth Horan. I hate Elizabeth Horan. She is a weak, sad woman. She is so bad, she yells at her kids. She ate her own heart. She is a busybody and short. She is fat. She has no sex. Dry, dysmorphic, 42. Bitchy, neurotic. Thinks the world is out to get her. Guess what? It's not all about you, I told her. Have you had to deal with her? Selfish, I think. Always talking about herself. Why do some people think the world revolves around them? What has she ever done so great? Write poems? Have kids? Please, woman, get a grip. Try my life on for a change, then you'll know what it is like to be a busy mum. I hate myself. I am a weak, sad woman. I am so bad, I yelled at my kids last night. I was eating my own heart, fed it out as bloody rags for dinner. I'm so sorry, sweet ones. I'm so nervous, I talk too much, trying to seem cheerful. But it comes out bizarre and makes other people nervous. I am short, disgusting and fat. Small Troll was my high school nickname. I haven't had sex since my children came. I am too ashamed to use my vagina for fun. It had a job to do, now it's done. I am on the slope of menopause anyway. I feel 95. God should probably end my life. I've done such wrong. My sanity is gone. I am a bad mum. I am in my head, my head, spinning planets, colliding particles, rumination, monkey brain, anger, rage, then again, the shame. I revolve around a dying sun. These frantic, desperate words which editors like, the only thing I claim. My children, small creatures of my body's pain. All I've done, all I love. Please, other women in this town, don't hate me. I am just a bug, flipped over, stepped on. Grip my hand, pull. Try on my life for a change. Then you'll know what it is like to be hated and deranged. So yeah, there's some like powerful stuff in this collection. This is the last one I want to read, Turn of the Screw. Obviously based on the Henry James novel. Governess, oh governess, see how the children cry in your sight. See little Miles in the torchlight. A uh, bly, bucolic bly, uncle blessed with tight thighs. Success, you unkempt, immature mess. See the mirror, see the boat. Feel their sex rocking back and forth. The lake swallows, sperm sent from the past. At uh, best, it's church, it's a school day. It's peekaboo at yourself. In the cloak, enraged death. Engage the ire, frighten little people to death. The small, terrifying penile id. The biggest things you know. Ghost roll plays the ego. Clitoris roundabout becomes the mother's fascination. But if no one's left, then who will be teaching? If no father, who is left to make the haunting? So yeah, I gave this collection a 4 out of 5. I thought it was pretty good, pretty good. 
Okay, then we have The Sea Refuses No River by Bethany Rivers. So I'll, this one's got a little blurb. In this collection, The Sea Refuses No River, there is a great acceptance of the painful moments as an integral part of the healing journey. To quote Adrienne Rich, I came to explore the wreck, and in this collection, Bethany discovers how the words are purposes, the words are maps. Okay, so here we have Horaeth, and um, I believe this is the Welsh word for home. Um, yeah, that would make sense. Just I've just seen the context of the poem. Okay, there is longing, my friend, and there is longing. Zaina Hashem Beck. Home is not where you think it is, nor is it where you remember. It's not bricks and mortar or the place where your parents reside. Some say home is a memory you keep locked in your heart, but you continuously lose the key. Some say home is the time before you were born and the time after you die. Some say home is the body you perspire in. Some say home is the hara, the seat of the soul. Love songs declare home is in the eyes of your lover or the resonance of his voice. But I say home is in the act of writing. Home is a recitation of Persian poetry, though you don't understand a word. Home is in the eyes of a golden statue of Buddha in a foreign land. Home is in the smell of garlic on your fingers three days after you cook the curry. Home is a song you keep on losing, keep hoping to remember. This one was probably my favourite of this collection. This is called It's Not About the Broccoli. I never saw you cut broccoli. I didn't know what you did with a main thick stem. I don't know if you ever called them fairy trees. Or how small or how tall you cut them. I don't even know if you liked broccoli or whether your body needed the alkaline. If you ever watched it boil or timed it steaming and wondered about whether to, if maybe, perhaps, and how to make a cheese sauce, or would it be al dente next to the carrots, lamb and mint and new potatoes? Perhaps you never ate broccoli at all, but as you watch me now chop up little green trees and little green stems, I think of the home I once knew. This one's called Rise. When you fall down, fall down to your knees, bent over double on the bedroom floor, the bed too far to crawl to. Sun, shadow, rain or snow makes no difference to your splintering stomach. The tsunami in your head. What is it? Tell me, what is it that gets you on your feet again? What is it that stops you going down to the river with stones in your pockets? I ask you this six months later, sitting on a stool at your kitchen counter, as you percolate coffee in the dim glow of your sanctuary. This is the room you love most. Brown walls, old signs from the 1940s, crates nailed to the walls, silver pans hanging in size order. I know you've been there. I know you've got up off the floor. Tell me. What you say next offers no comfort at all. Though you want to, your oil lamp isn't bright enough to light the depths of my well. I'm a single person in the world, thirsty. You're a single mother with a thread to the future. You have no choice. And I like there that reference to, um, you know, going down to the river with stones in your pockets, a Virginia Woolf reference. Which weirdly, she was referenced in another book I recently read as well. The same thing. Nameless now, after Mary Oliver. Though I will not ever know your spoken name, as it cannot be spoken, I don't know the name you truly know me by unless it's the one you almost chose. A name can mean so much, and like an alethiometer we don't usually see, deeper meanings the way moonbeams penetrate the undergrowth which only badgers can see the colours of. Though I may not ever know the true meaning of how I belong to you until after I've given up this mortal clothing as I learn to live with the questions, live with the journey I'm so often too tired to pursue. But thankfully you come to me in dreams and carry that which I cannot name or touch to somewhere. Where truth is a welcome embrace, raindrops fall into a forest pond, the non-words spoken. So obviously I like that one because of the uh, alethiometer reference there to his dark materials. Okay, up next we have seven full stops. Some people speak with no full stops and they build half-walled mazes with crashing paths, never finishing a sentence, or when my father completed his full stop, I learnt how to change it into an ellipsis or a dash, ignoring the question mark, hanging on to the comma. Jack used full stops but would erase them as soon as they hit the page. I never knew which statements were true at any given time. Virginia Woolf sentences seem to run as far as possible for as long as possible with as many phrases as can possibly be daisy linked together before eventually finally arriving at that long for full stop. If I was a full stop I would be pink on Mondays and blue on Sundays. I keep trying to full stop but the comma keeps lending its tail. Perhaps the full stop is nothing but a beautiful mesmerising circle. Earth, sun, moon, endlessly full, never stopping. I, I gave that a 3.75 out of 5. And then we have The Woman with an Owl Tattoo by Anne Walsh Donnelly. So this is basically about when she hit about 40 or so, her marriage broke apart and she discovered her sexuality. I'm not, I can't remember whether she's a lesbian or bisexual. History of my sexual encounters. This says, all penises in this poem are fictitious. Any resemblance to real penises, dying or dead, is purely coincidental. 
The Donegal man, who I am convinced was gay, penis like a prize-winning sausage dog, didn't want to struggle with my stubble for fear of taking the shine off his coat. A Bristol boy ripped my hymen, penis like a twister ice lolly, always melted too quickly and never quite filled me. The Aussie naval officer, penis as long and bent as the steel arches of Sydney Harbour Bridge, I jumped before he stood to salute. The bushman in Kakadu, penis tasted like a burnt kangaroo steak, said he hates when the sheilas don't come. Takes a bit longer than five minutes, bucko. The dub I met in Singapore, penis, slick as tiger beer, easing down a parched throat. He wanted me to go down, south on a boat to Darwin. I flew north to Kathmandu. Finally, the Wexford wanker held his penis as if it were a fishing rod, caught my clitoris, reeled me in. Took me seven years to escape his hook. Here we have, coming out to my therapist. Okay, I'm attracted to women, but I'm not gay. She raises her glass, takes a sip and asks, are straight women attracted to other women? It's just a phase I'm going through, it'll pass. She, sift she shifts in her seat, leans forward. Have you ever heard of internalized homophobia? I grip the arms of my chair. I'm not anti-gay and I'm not one of them either. And here we have coming out to my daughter. I have something to tell you. Don't want her to know, she says, scrolling her Instagram feed. It's good news, I'm seeing someone. Boyfriend or girlfriend? Girl. Her head rises from her phone screen. That's okay, I always knew you were gay. At least now you won't be lonely when I go to college. Let me have coming out to my mother. I'm seeing someone, it's a woman. Her eyes still on the TV screen, she says, your father was wondering why you got your hair cut so short. I'm glad you have company. She presses the volume button on the remote, a bit harder than needed. Oh, that's terrible, she says. Now they think blood pressure tablets are carcinogenic. I'd better ring the doctor tomorrow. So yeah, I thought this was fantastic. It really kind of communicated, I think, her experiences really in life. And that's what poetry should do. So I gave this a pretty solid 4 out of 5. I didn't really like the cover. That would be like my main criticism. But uh, yeah, I think she did a great job. And, but you know, these three poetry collections are all fantastic. So kudos to Fly on the Wall Press and definitely check them out if you're interested. So there we have it, that's what I made of these three indie poetry books. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of the poems I read, I guess. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, Bye bye